I'm Brie Larson. Oh, I'm Josh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so are we not saying last names? Well, I'm thinking like it starts off, however you intro your channel, I'm with Josh, he's a chef on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. And then I can, and then I can jump on and be like, hello, we're gonna make crunch wraps for you. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> okay, hello YouTube, I'm Brie, and I'm here with Josh, and I'm hungry. So, I want to make a crunch wrap supreme. Josh says that there's a way that we can make a homemade version that's vegetarian, but you can also make it uh, meaty if you'd like, uh, that is also kind of healthy. And I'm like, what? So, here we are, for your pleasure. Yeah, okay, so crunch wrap supreme. Um, shockingly easy. You put, it, you put it in a tortilla, put a little tostada, slap it together a little bit, goes in the pan, and uh, once the cheese is melted, it's it's good to go. Do you have everything with you by chance? I, I think so, except I was yesterday years old when I figured out I think that gar pow is garlic powder. Yeah, I thought went, this was, was some like, very exotic ingredient that I couldn't find anywhere. That's my, that is my bad. I forgot to uh, lengthen that word. Gar pow, you know? <laughs> I really like it. Gar pow. I love it. I want a shirt. Gar pow. Okay, so, so we're gonna make spicy cream crema. How do you say it? Crema. Spicy crema. I've got my uh, I've got my knees right here. I'll bring it on over here. Okay, I think I have all of the things. So you're gonna start with half a cup of your sour cream. And that's gonna go directly into your mixing bowl. Uh, two teaspoons of gar pow. Couple teaspoons gar pow. Sweet paprika, smoked paprika. Okay, how much did you say that? Some tisps? Two teaspoons, two tisps. Next is the one and a half teaspoons, I believe, of chipotle powder. So I believe, I don't know if I corrected this on your ingredient list. Uh, does it say jalapeno salsa or hot sauce? It said jalapeno salsa, which it was very specific and also somehow vague. <laughs> How did I send this and not double check this? <laughs> so jalapeno salsa, hot sauce, and really the whole point of that is it should just be something that is a little spicy, something for a little kick, you know? And whatever that is, two teaspoons, three teaspoons, however spicy you like it. Okay, so the thing is, is I have all the hot sauces from when I did um, hot ones, and I was like, okay, that's every spice level possible, so I thought I could just ask you, and then. Mm. Which one, well, which one's your favorite? That's always the first most important. Oh, I liked this one. Chipotle and habanero. Ooh. Mm. It's not super spicy though. This one was the third spiciest. So, taste. Ooh. Ooh, mine's spicy, but mine tastes good. Good. Okay, so that's pretty much, that's the that's the crema. We're done with that. So always clean up your workstation first. You know, you gotta have a nice, smooth workflow, as they say in restaurants. Okay, so next, uh, a little bit simpler. This one is just, you're gonna need a head of iceberg or uh, fric fric fricassee. Fric fricassee? Fricassee? Yeah, they didn't have any fricassee or any frisee or anything, but they did have these, um, these which are really beautiful. That's very nice. I would recommend yes. slicing it as thin as you can. The sharper the knife, the better. So, I'll go down and run across this. Nice and thin. Oh. You know, things always get more voluminous when you slice them. Have you ever noticed that? Like one head of cabbage is way yes. more than anybody needs. I tend to overbuy my lettuce. I feel like everybody overbuys lettuce. And it also goes bad so fast. It really does. It really does. That's why I have to replant, but I grew, I was growing a whole bunch of lettuce in the backyard and it was amazing. Cause you just, it never wilts. Cause it's just alive. So moving on, we've got our lettuce chopped. Or, or leaves of some sort of leaf. I also have a, a small bunch here of fresh cilantro. On it. Typically people would just chop as it is now, but you can see how sort of loose this is, right? It's like, just it's just not gonna chop very finely. If you grab it and sort of bundle it together and slowly begin rolling it up a little, oh. and then chop it together nice and fine. Genius! So I've got, uh, you can do a, a lemon or an orange or both or any citrus you've got. I've got this lemon and just grate that directly in there. Mm. Mix, uh, mix all your lettuce, uh, your herb salad essentially, what we'll call it together. And that, that's, well that's actually it. So I've done that. We've gotten, so look at that and not that much time folks. We've got two layers 
of a Crunchwrap Supreme. It's under, oh. here's the last piece of the filling, which is, we're actually gonna cook now. We oh. got our zucchini, we got our mushrooms, we gotta prep these. Uh, Bree, you, you have a zucchini, right? I don't see one. I do, I didn't, hold on. Uh, I didn't grab it. Hold on. Oh wait, no, it's fine. I forgot to get a zucchini. I want to try and find one that's, oh. Ridiculous zucchini, it's like, oh, can I even pick this up? It's like playing the, the violin, listen. Okay, I have come back, and like I said, I don't think oh my God. our bikinis are the same. This isn't even the biggest one. This one was just the easiest one for me to grab. Brie Larson's zucchini versus my zucchini. Who, who would win? Come on, it's not even a question. All right, so slice it into, well, I would say rounds. Yeah, you might. <laughs> you can't. We can't do it in rounds. You might want to break Let's that. Just... You might want to break that buddy boy down. Maybe, uh, maybe cut it in. That's, Bree. That's like half the. That's like half the size of your face. I know. You got. Okay. So maybe cut it in half, or you know what? Actually, I kind of like the idea of giant medallions. Giant medallion. Let's do some giant medallions. How thick are you going? A uh, third of an inch, half inch. That's fine. Cool. Okay. So you got your zucchini, your mushroom. Um, four cloves of garlic, peeled. Four cloves of garlic. Field. Okay, so with your garlic, once you've gotten it, just slice it, and you're gonna slice it about as thinly as you can. I actually got my knife in Japan, so it's pretty good. Oh, okay, okay, what kind of, do you know what kind it is? It was from like a guy like by the fish market who just like hand makes them right there, so I don't know. Oh, you got a real one then. You got a, yeah. you got a real solid yeah, I went to the I went to the oldest sushi restaurant in Tokyo, and the chef there, uh, took me to a place. It has to be difficult, like traveling, and then you, are you on like a diet when you go and do that? And what what is that like? You know, when you're around all these like great food cultures, you're you're obviously like a, a I don't know that I would use the word foodie because I feel like that word is overused. But you 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 enjoy food, you appreciate it, you respect it. How do you how do you do that? How do you cope with that? Well, it all kind of depends. So for certain things, like say like Captain Marvel. I was, I mean, I was paleo, I guess, while I was training, but then once I started filming, I was burning way too many calories to stick to anything. It was just like, I'd go home and crush two boxes of mozzarella sticks. Like, I did not give a darn. I've learned to just be pretty flexible. And as you know, I mean, we're making a vegetarian version of this. I try and stay as plant-based as possible, but like, also I have zero label on myself at all. It's not my vibe. I respect that. I think I think that's the healthiest way that you could approach that because it's really easy to just get into the flow of being in a diet and being like, well, I can't eat that. When you, it may be the only time that you get a chance to eat whatever it is in front of you or whatever somebody orders. And I think that's a really healthy way to approach it. I feel like a lot of people struggle with that. So you need a pan. I heard you have a cast iron skillet, maybe 12 inch. I don't, I have a nonstick. Oh, that's exactly what I asked for. That's perfect. Cool. Mm-hmm, medium high. Yep, and then go ahead and toss in a two and a half to three tablespoons of any oil you want that can handle the heat. I would recommend avocado oil or... Uh, I happen to have that. There you go. Looking good? Yeah, looking good. Cool, okay, so now we're gonna add in our mushrooms. And we're just gonna let those go and leave that on a medium high. We're gonna brown it just like you would steak or meat or, uh, or any sort of protein. Guys, this is where you would add any sort of protein, right? So if you're gonna do steak, sear your steak, uh, medium rare, please, folks. Uh, I prefer it that way, but of course, cook to your desire. Yes, but it could be anything. It could be chicken, it could be duck, it could be broccoli. It's your world, live your dreams. What, uh, what would you name your zucchini? I feel like for a giant zucchini, it needs to be something, something almost like polite sounding, like, like Frank. Bernard. Bernard. Bernard the zucchini. Am I putting slices of Bernard? <laughs> <laughs> Bernard is going in the pan, unfortunately. He's lived a whole oh, life no. and- uh... Why did we give him a name? Now I feel terrible. So I did, I did the whole, I did the whole wheat dough. So mine is, uh, mine is just a regular flour. Beautiful. That looks extraordinary. Plop that bad boy down top, like so. 
grab one little segment, but basically what I'm doing is I'm quarter turning, rolling, quarter oh, yeah. turning, rolling, and that will help you get a nice, yeah. even shape. So for everyone at home who decides they want to make a crunch wrap supreme, but realizes that they don't have tostadas, I'm going to take my crunchy taco shells and we're repurposing them because we don't waste. Mm. So first step, get yourself a, a tortilla. Place that down. Wait, I just want to point out, look at my heart-shaped tortilla. That is so, how did it get it's so perfectly heart-shaped? It was too hot. You're gonna take some of your, your crema. The flavor should be nice and married in there. Just take a little bit of that and put as much as you want in a nice little sort of center area. So go ahead and put on your vegetables. I would say like roughly a quarter of this mixture. I'll also point out to the vegans out there, obviously, you can use a vegan cheese. It's your world. Does the vegan cheese melt too? Yeah. I feel like I should probably know this and I don't. I feel bad about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you all of my favorite vegan cheeses. There's one company that I'm obsessed with. Okay, so you have your cheese. Great, now uh, you're gonna use your chips. I'm gonna use my tostadas. That's gonna go down. I would try to keep that as centralized as possible. You can kind of see how yeah. mine's in a nice little circle. We're ready, we're, we're pre-shaping, that's what we're doing. We're gonna hit that with our nice herb salad on top of that. And uh, be careful not to get, it's okay if you break the chip a little for this, because um, I like to flatten it out so it's not too tall. All right, smells good. And then last, we can hit it with our tom tomato. So just essentially imagine, I would say, you're gonna cut out a little circle about two inches in diameter, roughly. This is just to cover, this is just to cover the top when you wrap it. Got it, I'm gonna just use scissors. In disgrace. You're gonna fold one side up and over, and then uh -huh. you're gonna grab that little edge here. You see that edge? Yeah. And then also fold that in, and you'll see how you created that iconic crease. Oh my gosh. Pick this bad boy up. Here he is, looking beautiful and stunning and lovely. And I would recommend carefully turning him over so the creases face down into the pan so we griddle those and seal them first. I'm just afraid to let it go. I know it's, I'm gonna pop it oh. in the pan and it's all gonna fall out. You can do it, I believe in you. We're, we, you can do this. <gasps> yes. Okay, I did burn the tip of my thumb, but that's okay. It was so worth Woo! it. I need a crunch wrap. <laughs> it looks great. Wait, hang on, mine's still in the pan. All right, here's mine. We're looking, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's looking crunchy. Mm. Okay, first bite, let us commence. Mmm, mine's bomb. The texture, the spice, the crunch, we've got fragrance, we've got richness, the mushroom. You don't even need meat in this, honestly. Mmm, it tastes really good the way it is. So what, what did you learn out of this experience? What do you think is, um, what, what's your piece for this one? Okay, my piece is that it's really easy to make a tortilla. And I could totally do it again, and I think it's like a nice, added extra step that feels personal. I feel like very invested in this tortilla. <laughs> the heart. A round of applause really for the heart. Am, like, I'm, I'm connected to this tortilla. This is not a normal tortilla. What did you learn from this one? Honestly, I learned, well, I made a crunch wrap many a times, but what I have learned is that uh, you, Brie Larson, are an excellent cook and an excellent pupil. You're, you're, you, you're, you're skilled. You didn't need me for this. I could have given you this written recipe oh. and you would have slapped and snapped it together. Thank you so much for doing this, Em. Of course. Um, making my crunch wrap supreme dreams come true. Of course, Bree. Thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. You killed it. Guys, thank you guys for having me. Bree, next time, maybe we'll see you on my channel, huh? Yes, wait, absolutely. Bye. Bye. Thank you.